What three baits should you be using in the month of April? That's what we're gonna talk about right now. It's spawning time throughout the country, the middle of the country, down here in Florida, and in the middle of the country, we're gonna see a shad spawn, and a bluegill spawn, and a bass spawn. And the weather's finally starting to get nice, unless you're way up north. So today we're gonna to talk about the middle of the country, but these baits can be used anywhere that there's open water. And that's the important thing you need to remember. This is a time when bass are actively searching for that spot to hide and ambush fish. They're gonna be roaming from deep, deeper water and moving up into the shallow waters. They're gonna be looking for that mate, but also they're a little bit more active than normal or what we've had in the past couple months. In a lot of places, there's a shad spawn and here in Florida, we're gonna have a bluegill spawn usually in April, end of April. And that has a big influence on what we should be throwing. We're gonna downsize our baits a lot this month. This is how we'll catch more fish because the bait that the bass are feeding on are a certain size. So we want to stick to that same size as much as possible while still giving them something to, to, to seek out and eat. And like I said, bass are actively seeking out places to ambush, like a, a rock or a stump or something where they can not only spawn, but they can find a hiding spot to ambush those little those little fry that are all over the shallow of the water, that grass mat or that grass flat. Those little fry will stick in there. So will the tadpoles, because you're gonna start seeing some tadpoles the more south you go. So that's what we wanna key in on this month. April is a time when fish are pushing forward. They're pushing towards the shoreline. They're gonna to push towards weed lines and they're gonna to push towards grass edges rock beds, lay down, stumps, those things. They're gonna hold fish, prey, and that's where the bass wanna hide. So these three, really four baits I'm gonna tell you about this month, you probably have in your tackle arsenal. If you have something similar to it, use that. Something that you're confident in especially. The lures and the brands, while they do make a difference in some instances, I don't think or I don't wanna push a certain brand on you. If you like what I see, there'll be a link in the description below where you can get it off Tackle Warehouse. But in general, these are just baits that we all should have. So my first bait has two in one. It's a small swim bait with a good tail. Now this one has an underspin. Here's why I have an underspin on this one, and this is a cast prodigy. I have an underspin on this one because if I see little fry moving a lot, jumping out of the water, I want to throw on an underspin just to get a little bit more flash, cast it out and have that flash with it. In this case, what makes this bait so good is, I don't know if you can see it, there's little glass beads right here, so it makes a little bit of rattle noise. I would normally put some super glue right there, but I get the flash from this little blade the noise from that, and then the majority, the biggest thing I want is I want that kicker tail back there. I want something that thumps really well. If I don't see shad or fry on top of the water, I'm gonna go with something even smaller. And this is the Minwow from Hyperlastics. Now, truth be told, this is the first bait I'm throwing. Uh, this doesn't have any scent to it, or any scent or any sound to it, but this is the first one I'm throwing because of the tail and the wobble of the action. Patrick made that one and it's fantastic year round, but right now in April, this is a really good bait because that's about the size of the fry that you're gonna start seeing. My second bait is a shallow water crankbait. This one is a Bagley one, I think it's a balsa one. And then I have one that I don't even know what, the, what brand it is, but it's just the right size. Again, you can see it's the size that matters. But uh, that's what I'm keying in on. I want something that's gonna run shallow, have that aggressive wobble, something that I can throw a good distance, carry it down the weed line or grass line or on that edge from shallow to deeper, I want to I want to fish that edge as much as possible. If I see, uh, well, while you're up north in the northern states or in the middle of the country states, you have rock 
beds or rock edges. I wanna cast that down and bounce it off some of them. So I wanna use a bait that they're seeing a lot of. They're seeing a lot of bluegill fry. They're seeing a lot of shad spawn, all those things. So I wanna use a smaller bait that looks something similar. In this case, I have one that has rattles and I have one that's gonna be silent. The key to a lot of the things that you're seeing in this video is I'm going to use two lures that are somewhat similar, but one has sound and one that doesn't have sound. If I find that I'm getting more baits with one, and because one is silent compared to the other one, I'm going to stick to that one. I'm also trying to fish water columns. I don't want to go too deep, and I don't want to stay on top all the time. I want something that I can fish in the middle. Now, my third one is probably the bait that I'm the most confident in, but I want to use a, a Senko that's a floating bait. So I have two of them. This is really the one I use the most of. I use this one because I want that bait to, and I'll take one out, I want that bait to have a certain action in the water. So in this case, I want to, I want to uh, rig it, you know, right there. And then when I pop that bait, I want that bait to fold and snap back. Now with these ones, these ones are really soft, so they don't get that as much snap back compared to the worm spins that just pop back. The other thing that I like why I use these more than I probably will use these is these are the hyperlastics that stretch forever. And this is like a lifetime supply of these actually. And I can rig these so many different ways depending on what the, what the bass are doing. In this case, I'm really only rigging this wacky rigged or Nico and putting a weight in there to get it down to the bottom. But I want to use a worm that's a top water worm right now. That's a floating worm. I want to be able to cast it a good distance, let it sit on top, make a twitch of my rod, have that bait bend and pop back, and then just flutter on top of the water. That will aggravate bass. So my third lure is, yes, a floating stick worm. So I normally don't give you four, but this month we're giving you four. And it is a top water spitting bait. Use whatever one you want. In my case, I'm using a lot of frogs because I have a lot of grass on top of the water. But if you're able to use one that's that has that face and has treble hooks, use that. But this is a great bait right now. Either a top water frog one or the other Zara Spook or whatever you want, even though that isn't a spitting top water bait. I want something that's a spinning bait, but I also want something that I can keep stationary in the strike zone. I don't want it to make giant back and forth. I want to use quick rod twitches to make it just dart back and forth, and then a heavy rod twitch to bounce it in the water, make that water spit, and make the sound. This is key right now because as you can make that long cast to where you think a fish is betting and just aggravate it by keeping that bass, this lure, in the strike zone. This isn't a lure that I'm actually using aggressively right now. I'm making that cast and I'm trying to twitch it and keep it in a foot square and then plunge it and make the noise and keep it there, stop, pause, but it needs to go back and forth quickly. Stay in that strike zone. It's a great bait, this spitting frog topwater bait, whatever you wanna use right now. So there you have it, three, Nah, four baits that I think you should be using in April. I want you to comment below and tell me which four you like to use because it does help. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. Good luck in April because it's a great time to fish. Talk to you all soon. Cheers.